Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be doing another reading for you guys. So I'm going to read to you guys this book here by Vex King. It's called Good Vibes, Good Life. Due to the current situation that most of us are experiencing with us being quarantined, like there's nothing for us to do. So we're just home. Um, a lot of people are being challenged with their mental health and I just wanted to do something that's gonna make you think a little bit and hopefully bring positivity to your life and just girl you got to keep going because we are all in it together and uh, let me know what you guys think about this book here as I'm reading into you if you guys have missed out on my other few readings that I've done I'll have those linked down below I'm also going to be doing my makeup as I'm reading to you guys I decided to do something very simple I don't even have a full coverage look here this is a tinted moisturizer I played around with a lot of new makeup so I'll have all those products linked down below in my description box for you guys so don't forget to check that out and I'll also link this book in case you guys want to gift it to somebody or if you guys just want to read it yourselves so let's go ahead and jump into today's video no, I'd rather be waking up with you Set up alone in your room Slept with the light on Waiting up for you Don't we're going to be jumping into part two. This is called Positive Lifestyle Habits. Higher states of vibration will help you feel good, which means you can manifest more good things into your life. Your aim is to feel better by vibrating higher. There are many lifestyle habits that will help you do this and bring you closer to a more loving and joyful state. You can change your emotional state through all sorts of activities that will raise your vibration, some of which will have a lasting effect while others may make you feel good only in the moment. For example, if you feel upset because you've fallen out with a friend, you might be able to change your emotional state by doing something fun with other friends instead. Other ways you might raise your vibration include physical touch with a loved one, laughing, listening to uplifting music, spreading kindness, sleeping deeply, moving your body, or any other activity that you enjoy. But afterwards, you might be left to face your misery again. Nothing has improved in your mind. You have just temporarily avoided the problem. Alternatively, the practice of meditation can over time completely change the way your brain functions. Meditation and the introspective act of studying your low vibration emotions can help you transform these to a higher vibration emotions. Meditation might help you view the fallout of your friend with a more positive way. Since everything is energy, you could say that everything you engage with will affect your vibration somehow. But new actions and changing your mindset in a positive way are also elements of self-love to become the best, the happiest person you can be. There are also new actions we can take to make ourselves feel better that may seem to work only for a short while to begin with but when carried out consistently over a long period of time become habits that reap lasting results. Surround yourself with positive people. When you're not feeling too good, try being around people who are. They're vibrating higher than you and there's a good chance that you can also absorb some of that energy. Have you ever met someone for the first time and felt like something isn't quite right about them? You can't quite put your finger on it, but you just get a bad vibe and usually you find out later on that there is a good reason for this feeling. Energy doesn't lie. You've probably experienced the opposite too. There are certain people who we identify as being full of positive energy. They always seem to infect those around them with good vibes. I've changed my emotional state many times just by being around cheerful people. Positive people can also provide empowering perspectives on our problems. Being in a positive state they're more likely to have an optimistic outlook on what we're going through. They'll try to look for a positive in the situation and help us change our focus to something that lifts our vibe. So make a commitment to build meaningful and lasting relationships with positive people. When you spend more time with people who add value to your life and elevate your mood, you'll begin to adopt their encouraging thinking patterns and reflect their vibrations back at them. The law of vibration suggests that we attract people who are vibrating on the same frequency as us. So if we can begin to experience more positive emotions on a regular basis as a result of other people, 
will attract even more positive people into our life, thus enforcing the good vibes around us. Change your body language. It's hard to crack a smile when things are going wrong, but a 2003 study by Simone Schnall and David Lurd show that if you fake a smile, you can actually trick your brain into thinking you're happy by releasing feel-good hormones called endorphins. This might seem a little wacky at first. If smiling for no reason feels strange, then find a good reason to smile. You could smile at the prospect of your smile itself making someone else feel happier. They might smile back at you, giving you a genuine reason to keep your smile alive. In fact, our entire body and physiology can affect our thoughts and feelings by changing our outer state. It may also surprise you to learn that the vast majority of messages that we give other people are nonverbal, such as facial expressions, gestures, or even the way we hold ourselves while we're talking. For this reason, it's important that we try to think about the messages we're conveying with our body language. If I told you to show me how someone would appear if they were depressed, you'd probably know exactly how to portray them. You'd slump your head down, looking grim. If I asked you to show me how someone would appear if they're angry, you could do that with ease too. Now think about how a person who is happy and feels high on life would appear. What would their facial expression be like? How would they be standing? Is there a particular way they'd be moving? Where might their hands be? Are they likely to be making any gestures? Social psychologist Amy Cuddy is re-owned for her work on how body language not only affects how others see us, but also how we see ourselves. A report co-authored by Cuddy claims that simply by doing one of these poses related to power of only two minutes a day, you can create a 20% increase in confidence, hormone testosterone, and 25% decrease in the stress hormone cor cortisol. The so-called power poses are quick and easy way to feel more powerful, says the report. Some people get the wrong end of the stick and pretend to have some particular asset or talent to seek attention from others so that they can feel better about themselves. Take some time out. Don't underestimate the importance of taking time to relax. Sometimes we get so caught up in our lives and what's going on around us that we become overwhelmed and tense. This simple solution is to unwind and keep some distance from the things that are stressing you out. Don't be afraid to spend some time alone. I've noticed that sometimes you can feel peopled out. If you're an introvert, this feeling might be quite common. You feel like everyone wants a piece of you and it just gets too much. If you're living with a spouse, friends, or family, this might seem a little cruel. It's not that you dislike them or that you're even fed up with them. It's just that you need a break a chance to breathe and recharge. You just need to be alone for a while. That's perfectly acceptable and doesn't make you any less loving. It's so easy to feel overstimulated by the media and social media and in need of a period of rest from these things too. How can you tell if you need a break? Well, here's an example. If someone tries to do something nice for you, yet you feel like they're trying too hard or they're all up in your space, it might be a sign that you're all peopled out. Yes, you might feel bad because you know this person has good intentions, but you just want them to stop. In Mexican Spanish, the word enjentado describes this particular feeling. It refers to the feeling of wanting to be away from people after spending time with them. Although you shouldn't let your mood dictate your manners, neither should you feel bad for wanting to disconnect for a bit. It's not only beneficial for you, but for others too. The longer you stay peopled out without a recharge, the higher the chance you'll lower the people's vibrations. It's also very powerful to spend some time in nature. In this day and age, it's increasingly difficult to navigate through life without technology. However, being out in nature can help to replenish and rejuvenate your entire being. A research study found in 1991 found that the natural environments had recuperate effects by bringing about positive emotional states and encouraging psychological well-being. You don't have to make this complicated. You could go outside for a walk, do something in the garden, go and sit under a tree or gaze up at the stars. If the sun is shining, absorb some rays of light that can help boost your vitamin D and levels of serotonin, a happy hormone that acts as a natural mood stabilizer. 
Find inspiration. Inspiration keeps me driven and optimistic nowadays. There are so many ways that we can get inspired. Self-help books, newspapers, or empowering novels like The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho are great as a myriad digital resources of inspiration such as podcasts. Don't underestimate the power of great inspirational movie either. I personally find The Pursuit of Happiness starring actor Will Smith very uplifting. I remember one particular period during which I felt completely lost in life. I just left a job to pursue my own business selling inspirational t-shirts. I'd invested my own money and to my dismay, they weren't selling as well as I'd hoped. I thought they were going to be sold out within days. I'd read all the business textbooks, spent hours on fashion blogs, and felt like I had all the knowledge required to run a successful company and bring something innovative to the fashion world. However, my reality was proving otherwise. I was beginning to lose faith in myself and my abilities. I questioned my direction in life and on top of this, my mom saw that I was struggling and told me I should get another job as I needed to make money to live on and help out at home. The pressure felt immense. When you begin to doubt your abilities, you can quickly fall deep into a sea of misery. You begin to experience all of the lower vibrational states and this can be damaging. I knew I had to do something, so I listened to various personal development audiobooks, picked up some more self-help books, streamed online videos, and read articles, quotes, and blog posts. I even started speaking to an entrepreneurial friends I'd met via social media. I started learning about other people's hardships and how they overcame them. Even when the odds were against them, I started to feel inspired and my self-belief grew. These stories were demonstrating my failure wasn't final. Anyone who has accomplished anything great has faced big challenges or failures, but they're only final if you quit. Admittedly, my t-shirt business didn't work out, but it sparked changes, ones that benefited me hugely. When you're inspired, you find drive and you feel good about where you're going and what's possible in your life. Okay, and that wraps it up for this second part of the book so that was actually part two not chapter three i don't know where i got the idea of chapter three but i have to kind of cut each part in half because th this video would just be very long and this makeup look was extremely simple so i just wanted to kind of summarize what we just read because basically everything that we just read i've been um, experimenting with I decided to take a complete break from social media and just recharge because I do work on my videos towards the end of the night and the reason I do like filming at night is because I have two little ones that require a lot of attention and throughout the day I'm constantly doing things for them so if I'm filming a video I just sometimes like if I try to film a video during the day and they come in here I just start to snap at them and I don't think that's fair so that's why I choose to film my videos at night and I've been very sleep deprived so just not having enough sleep and just being on social media every single day seeing all of the news and everything that's just coming about in the United States right now um, definitely took a hit on my mental health along with the fact that we're just in the house all day every day um so i took a break and i just think it's really necessary that uh you disconnect whether that's from family or friends or maybe you're stuck in a place that you're not happy in like where you your living situation you're not happy Find some time for yourself to kind of clear your thoughts. Obviously, you can't do it in the house that you're currently living in because you're not happy there. So maybe take a walk, go out for a run and listen to like a book. Like I said, I've been listening to a lot of audiobook books. So you can listen to a book or listen to meditation music. Just sit at a park and listen to it like you're isolated from your environment. And I think that that definitely has helped me over the last month so just like just meditating and getting collecting all my thoughts i also started to garden in my backyard i got a, a few little plants and i heard you can grow potatoes from potatoes so i dug a potato underground 
<laughs> I don't know how that's going to work out. I also um, planted uh, garlic. <laughs> I think that should work out because I've seen like little plants growing out of them. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to throw it underneath there. Got a palm tree, a few other cute little plants. I'll insert pictures and stuff. Okay, so I'm just going on about me, but just what I took from this book is that the way that you view yourself, like the way that you carry yourself is how you're going to be feeling. So for the time that I was like depressed, I was just in bed. I would get up, cook for my kids, come back to bed, and I, I just felt so low of energy. I was also eating like crap. Like at times I didn't even want to cook, so I would just get fast food, which... Just, I gained a lot of weight during this whole time. So I'm slowly working back to being myself again because I, I have been feeling very off. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys enjoyed this book. Thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. I know this is definitely a very different video because, I, like, who's going to watch well, I mean, there are a few of you guys that actually watch my videos where I read to you guys and do my makeup at the same time. There's something that, like, just watching my videos back, I really enjoy listening to me reading. I don't know. I'm weird like that. So I'm glad that some of you guys are also enjoying it. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give my video a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. I'll be here next week with another, um, finishing up this second part of part two. So subscribe to my channel and I hopefully I do see you guys here in my next video. Bye.